Well, Stephen, as the minister said when she first arrived, when she got to Duncan Village, that she will try to start relocating those who are being in accommodated in shelters and community halls. And that's exactly what's happening. We've seen the first people coming in. About 23 people so far um, have actually come in. And they're coming from uh, the community hall, which is uh, by the border training center. Uh, at uh, NU1 in Mtanzani. So here they are right now and uh, they are actually being allocated uh, their bungalows and where they go in with their families. It seems as though um, a, there's a bit of a problem with you know the size of the people. I mean I think this is something we spoke about um, just a few days ago that sometimes the issue comes to you know uh, how spacious are these temporary structures for families or in big families or those who are living with extended families. But, Stephen, besides that, they are so happy. I mean, when they were coming in, they were dancing, they were singing, they were clapping their hands because, as you can imagine, some people here have been living in informal settlements their entire lives. Over 10 years, 15 years, people have been living in informal settlements. So for them, this is definitely something. We're just going to talk to uh, one of... Um, the residents here, actually. Mama Gunchan. Alright, now Stephen, of course she's very excited saying that, uh, you know, she's been living in informal settlements for the past seven years. She moved here, I mean we heard a story, uh, this is someone we had spoken to yesterday uh, and, and she said that actually she left her hometown coming this side to East London and she's been in, living in informal settlements for seven years but now she says finally she can have a place of her own so she was relaying her gratitude to the municipality to the premier but saying that unfortunately for her uh, she was removed from the informal settlements in a very heartbreaking manner where she had to lose everything in order for her to finally have some form of a formal structure. But of course, Stephen, these are just temporary arrangements for now until proper housing can be allocated to the people. Sipa, I mean, it's just one story out of so many that come out of these floods. The scale of the problem there, how many people actually need help? It's a massive, massive problem. I'm talking about hundreds of people and not just uh, counting the occupants of a household. I'm talking about hundreds of households, Stephen. It really is a mess. And I mean, besides those ones who have been displaced or left homeless, we're also looking at the people who still have these structures uh, on the flat lines, which the minister says the process for removing those and relocating them um, is, is also underway. So the focus right now is, with, is on those who are actually homeless now so that they can have some form of housing and accommodation. And, and I mean, Stephen, we were driving around um, this uh, temporary arrangement or temporary camp, and what we found is that there's still a lot of vacant, uh, you know, structures which hopefully they will be able to accommodate most of, you know, the, 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 the people, especially those who are also still in those informal structures in the flat lines. Because, Stephen, we, we, we've heard that, you know, these rains and uh, these floods are not going to end just yet. This is something that, you know, the local government, the people living there, provincial government, are still need to look into and anticipate over the next few days.
And Sipra, I mean, there's going to be work from government there, but to restore people's lives is very difficult. And the big concern is some people in that area also live on a floodplain. They can't actually stay where they were. Exactly. So that, that, that is what uh, today the minister was coming to see and also address those communities to talk to them and as you plead with them, Stephen, saying that in most cases when, you know, the officials come to actually move them to uh, better areas, people re refuse to leave those areas. So she was pleading with them and that the process has actually started. they first starting with the ones that are destitute and then the ones that are still uh, on the floodlines they will be moved as well in due time. But now Stephen, I think the main issue and, 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 and key part of this whole thing is you know, mostly the local municipality, provincial government as well, they need to look into how they can stop this from continuing because you can move those people who are currently there now, but two days later, a day later, knowing how migration works, you will see new informal structures built today. So that is the key issue here, is that removing people now, but then you have people coming in again. So how does the municipality, uh, you know, ensure that people do not build on those flat lines? How are they going to prohibit them from, you know, new informal structures coming in? Sipa Kema, I really appreciate the update. Thank you. Our reporter in the Eastern Cape for us this afternoon. The stories coming out of the flooding really are heartbreaking.